Peace be with you, my friends. It is another great day that the Lord has given us. I'm Pastor Dan here, and it is wonderful to be with you again on this occasion. Fall is definitely hit, and we're transitioning into a uh, time when we're going to eventually enter into a new year. New year, that's right. Advent's, it seems like it's just around the corner. That's un unbelievable. But with that, we have opportunity to invite the Spirit of God into our lives and the world. So let us pray that the God would be in our conversation this morning. Holy One, as we are here again this moment, we pray that you help us to know that you are with us in this way. Help us to come to you in faith, trusting that you move in our lives and in this world around us, and that your infinite love carries us even now. You know the concerns we have, the burdens in our lives. Again, we offer them to you so that we may trust that as we are here, we are held in your love, but also you, you hold those brokenness and concerns in our, of our life. May we then be present to you to hear what you'd say and be restored in your image. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen. Christians join to sing, Alleluia, Amen. Loud praise to Christ our King, Alleluia, Amen. Let all with heart and voice before His throne rejoice. Praise is His gracious choice, Alleluia, Amen. Come, lift your hearts on high, Alleluia, Amen. Let praises fill the sky, Alleluia, Amen. He is our guide and friend, to us he'll condescend. His love shall never end, Alleluia, Amen. Praise yet the Lord again, Alleluia, Amen. Life shall not end the strain, Alleluia, Amen. On heaven's blissful shore, His goodness we'll adore, Singing forevermore, Alleluia, Amen. Well, today, beloved of Christ, I'd like to have us again revisit this concept that God loves you deeply. And God has sent persons, again, before uh, in history that, again, express that infinite love. And that God has a message that you and I are called to know and awaken to and then live out. And part of that journey has been, if you remember, Paul. Paul, who, who comes at one of the late, later of the apostles, who then is sent out, and he particularly reaches out to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles are the non-Jewish persons, so that means you and I, for the most part, I would assume, as we gather today, that God is speaking to us. Now, I'm going to be reading from a text from, from the Ephesians, and it is to the people of Ephesus, who, who particularly Paul has a sense of love for. And I think this book sees what they've been doing and their prayers and what they're about, and he longs for them to know all the more the, the infinite capacity that God has for them and what God wants to do for them. And in this day and age, I think God wants to once again break into our lives that we too may know that and live into it as we share with others as well God's grace, as we too experience God's grace. So this is Paul sta stating about his situation, and then he leans into what he's referring to. He says, although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ. So... Now, there's no limits of the grace that Christ is, is shedding on to us through the love that the Father has and has been revealed through him. And then it continues. And to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for the ages in God who created all things. So you and I are able to awaken to something that had been hidden for ages prior.
prior to Jesus' coming. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety may now be made known to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. So that through the church, you and I, so that through you and I, God is revealing what's going on through Christ. That you and I have a purpose, that through the Spirit's movement in our lives, we can then are part of God's revealing to the rest of the world. So each day as we gather and we move out, we do our things that we, that in business or at home or wherever it may be, you and I are an expression or can be the expression of what God is seeking to reveal. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he had carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. So you and I have been given access in a way that prior to Jesus coming, none really had experienced or tasted. But through Jesus, you and I have been given access to an immense uh, reality that we can call into this world, that we can experience if we move in faith. And I think that's part of the challenge, too, is that as we gather on Sunday after Sunday, that we remember that we stand in the presence of the living God, and that we are then, as we gather in prayer, in the presence of the living God. And by faith, then, we start inviting the kingdom, God's ways, as God draws us into action, into thought and prayer. Now, over the last several weeks, I've been talking to you about having prayers, not just of one's head, but of one's heart, that they're that connection God longs for us, that, that in the very beginning of the book of Genesis, over and over again, people's hearts fall away, and their inclinations, their desires, what they long for is falling away. You see that over and over again. And what God, through Jesus, is seeking to do is to re tune our hearts, our inclinations, our desires, and so that our, our world around us is transformed, that the power of God is released into this world. And through that, we, along with Paul, are then sent to others, that we, like him, have been given a purpose, a mission in this life. Paul then continues on. He speaks about his own suffering, that his sufferings are in the benefit of the folks that he's speaking to. And I believe in some ways, like a parent, you're wanting to, to suffer things for your children. I think he's expressing it in the same way. And so, too, we may suffer for those around us as out of love for them, as God gives us love for those who, who we see struggle in this life. But as our hearts are moved by their pain, by their, their trials they're going through, I think in that way we offer our prayers and we invite heaven to break in all the more. So I'd like to move on then to later in this particular chapter where Paul says, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, that is God's self, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with the power through his spirit. Now you notice he's not talking about, well, may you get your head right, that is, that you just know in your head. But again, there's this, the, the, the focus goes back on, may you know within your inner spirit that deep within you, that splunk knowing your very guts, that you may know the power of God's presence and that you will be strengthened by the Spirit. How cool is that? Again, that's that word uh, energy that comes from that, that energy be released is the same word used for dynamite, that you will be, have this amazing strengthening within. And that then is revealed in your day-to-day -day experience. And that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in what? What do you think? In love, of course, in agape, that as you've come to love God, that that roots you and guides you, and then God's Spirit is released into your life. And this is what Paul was praying for them, but I believe also praying for you and I. And as I was reading this chapter again, it just struck me how, how God was saying to us this day, that that is God's longing for us as well. That we come to not just the head knowledge, that we're, we're walking around with a theological idea of what God is about, or, or if you will, cognitive atheists. That is, we just move around. We know what, the, what it's about, but we don't know down in here that, that God longs for that to break through in our lives. And that so transforms us. And then he continues, I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. So how does that work? He says that you may know the height, the breadth, the depth that surpasses knowledge. Well, again, it's, it's beyond what it, we can just know with our heads, but we experience it through our hearts and our lives. And in that way, then, we're, we are a doorway of something far bigger 
than just ourselves. We're the doorway of the very living presence of Christ. Hence why I continue to remind you that we are the living gospel, that it isn't just this book that we call to, to mind, but God has placed us as God has placed Christ in this world. So too God has given the responsibility to the church, you and I, to then bear that into the world. And in that way, as we come to, to realize, to come to understand, not just with our heads, but with our very souls, God's infinite love for around us, the world is transformed. So again, that you may know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So on this day, are you feeling full? Do you have a sense of the fullness of God? And I pray that as we go along that you will come to know that. And it isn't something that most of us instantly experience, but over time we do. Now, we're in a world that there's, there's a lot around us that is caustic to the human soul. Now, this isn't the first time in human history. There's oftentimes, there's kind of ebbs and flows of history where there, there's a toxic environment around us. And, and what do people do? How do you respond? Do you just kind of immerse yourself into the toxicity and die? I hope not. I mean, the one image that I've been uh, told years ago about what it means to be insane is that you, you continue to do the same thing over and over again and you expect different results. That, that you keep doing the same thing, you go, well, it's going to change. Well, you know, that is a definition of insanity that you expect something to change if you keep doing the same thing over and over again. But God calls us to change, so we have different expectations because the world can change by the power of God's presence. But you and I have to change. We have to be open to making those shifts. So have you shifted a little bit the past several weeks as I've invited you to pray? That I've invited you to think not just with your head as you've gone through your prayers, but to start going within and saying, God, help me to allow your spirit to move me. And if you do, I, again, I exhort you that as God is calling to you, that God is calling you this day again to move into a place where you come to know that fullness of God's love for you not just with your head, but with your, your totality, your being. And that is an expression of God, heaven breaking in. How wonderful is that? Then you and I can become to taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Now let's back up to when there's a time when the world was t very uh, ex extraordinarily toxic. So I'd like to go back to a story in Genesis when we hear about Noah. Now I'm going to turn to chapter 6 of Genesis and read part of uh, this in terms of the background of what occurs when Noah enters a scene. But when we talk about what God longs for us, to know the, the breath, the depth, the, the fullness of God, you also, when you look back in the Old Testament, there are individuals that also tasted some of this. And I believe Noah was one of those individuals that, that he had a sense of what God longed for, that he longed for people to get along with each other. He longed for his children to be able to, to live in a communities where people would treat each other with dignity, but also would use the, the ground and that which was around them in ways that all, which would allow them to to grow and enjoy life, but also share it with others. But in the culture that was a developing and occurring, folks were not directed that way. And what we hear then is God's grieving over what is occurring. So this comes from chapter 6. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. So there was... Immediately, you, you experience a sense that God is grieving over people's decisions, their inclinations, their longings, that they're, they're longing after stuff that, that hurts others. They're longing after stuff that isn't their own, that they continually just think of their own interests without having any consideration for those around them. And we find that God is, is getting um, more and more um, angered by that. Why is he angered? Because of what we're doing to each other. And the Lord was in sorry that he made humankind on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. Wow. You ever think about God being grieved today as we abuse each other around the globe? As you see the acts of violence in our city streets, as we poison the earth, there's a sense, I think, that God grieves over what we have done and are doing to each other and to the earth itself. And as brothers and sisters in Christ, we are the ones that are called to know and to be aware and to be transformed, to be different. To call the kingdom, to treat each other differently, and then to offer to others. To bring healing to the world around us. But also to recognize that as we grieve, as we read the newspaper and, and we get upset, 
We also, I believe, have a sense of the heart of God, that God grieves for the brokenness that we too observe around us. Let us then continue. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. For I am sorry that I have made them. That we've brought God to a place where he's sorry. Why is God sorry? And I think we might think, well, on one level it's because of what's happening, but I think there's a sense of, as we, we see Jesus is coming in this world, that he grieves, for instance, when he goes into Jerusalem. He says, oh, how have I longed to bring you, how, how often has God longed to, to bring you as a, as a mother hen who brought her chicks together. There's a sense that, that God longs to, to bring us back together. And it is, a, it is a, an affliction of even God's spirit as we afflict others around us. And then when, when John the Baptist goes on the forefront before Jesus co- comes and he calls repentance, I think there's a sense of God's longing to, for all of us to, to see each other differently, to see the world around us as something that is so fragile, so beautiful, so wonderful, but it's also so unique that we would act differently. And we need the power of God, though, to change us from within to do that. And so when you hear these stories like of Noah, I would again invite you to think about it is out of God's love for the world around us that it angers God that we, as we abuse those around us, we hurt each other, or we are hurt by those around us. But God's longing is that we are then transformed, that love overcomes those issues, that love goes beyond our doorways, that love gives us the power and the knowledge and the the, the the inclination for good. And in that way then, we bear the kingdom and we continue in the mission that God has given us. May that be true for you this day. Amen. to see you I want to see you open the eyes of my heart Lord open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you to see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, 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 high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 you are to see you. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. As we conclude our time together, let us again offer our prayers before the living God. 
Holy One, as we come to you again in this moment, I would pray for those who are viewing particularly that they, as Paul prayed for us thousands of years ago, that they would come to know the height, the breadth, the depth, the, the, compre the comprehensiveness of your love in their lives at this moment, that they will know the reality and let that reality deepen within them of your love for them. And as they are then transformed in your image, May then they share it with those around them for those places that they're experiencing brokenness or hardships or desertness that is the aridness of one's spirit. May they have a sense of fullness. You know, our climate in with which we live, Holy One, we pray not only for ourselves and those around us, but our world to bring healing to the world, to the countries that are particularly fighting with each other. May your spirit intercede but in all these ways, Holy One, open our eyes that we might follow you all the more closely, come to know you and love you all the more deeply, and walk with you faithfully. With that said, may the blessing of Father, Son, Holy Spirit be upon you this day. Go forth with excitement and enthusiasm because God sends you forward. Amen. <laughs>